watching the Hoosier Garage. All right, you're back on the Hoosier Garage. And like we said on the last episode, we was going to finish out some stuff on these fenders. Now this one is pretty much done. This is the one that we spent that whole episode working on, splicing in areas and all that kind of stuff. We have our POR15 coated all on the inside of it. We will use our tie coat primer. Uh, well, what do they call that? It's like a, it's a tie coat primer. That's what they used to call it. But anyways, it's gonna get the proper primer that will bite into that stuff. And then we can put uh, our color or whatever we want in there, black or undercoating. So that was in pretty good shape. It just needs to be kind of light sanded and we'll be ready for epoxy. This one here is not the one that's gonna go on the duster. In fact, it's one of the old Valiant fenders that the Crawfords brought us. Uh, but it's got some kind of, some heavy damage, I guess he said, Peter. There's a lot of Bondo. So the fender is not great and there's a bit of rust up here, which, you know, that's fixable, but it's a parts fender at this point. And plus we need to get this out of here, this little section, because on the fender we are using, this one, which is partially done, that area was rotted out. So we're gonna cut, splice, weld all this back together. And then, it, I don't know, I think there's a little spot here we need to fix, just a little cut out, cut and paste type deal. Clean the rest of it up and then it'll be ready to go like that one is. Other than that, we're gonna get into these doors, which you know we've already done the doors, but there's some touch up areas where there was some cracking. We welded this up. Both doors have that plus a couple other little blemishes. And then hopefully we can get uh, this maybe ready for some hinges and get it on the car. Don't know if that'll happen this episode, but that's what's coming up next. Okay, I'm gonna cut this brace out. I'm just gonna do it roughly, remove best I can, and then we'll chop away all the stuff that we're not gonna need. By the way, I did get me a new grinder, four and a half inch. It's a Bosch. Got this at Tractor Supply. So far, so good, really like it. The last one was a port of cable, it lasted me a long, long time. But I happened to run into this one, I thought I'll give Bosch a try, because Bosch is a very good brand and most of their power tools, so. Like I said, so far, so good on this one, so let's get chopping. I just want this part, I'm gonna to have to remove this flange. Um, part of the fender has a little rot on this rail that you see when you open the hood. So I can kind of salvage this piece and see how I can use that one. But otherwise, I will get that guy off there. Trim it up, ready to go. So here's this piece. Removed it, kind of buzzed some of the excess garbage off of it trimmed it and it will soon fit right in there we will have to spot weld it plug weld it, however you want to call it that a couple spots here and here and then we will butt weld it there i will run it through the blaster first clean it up really good and then this we will hit with our por 15 kind of extend it into there and have nice coverage of sealing properties all right, so we're all blasted up. Looking pretty good there. Went ahead and drilled through the spot welds to hold this old part in it. We had cut down kind of the side there. So I already got the putty knife I like to use when you get things weakened out. So here's what you got. That's the equivalent of that. So this is out. We're going to clean this up. And then we could splice this in. This has been trimmed where it needs to be. So then we weld it up to there. And then since we have these holes where we drilled out the old piece, we can clamp it and then plug weld that back in. And then we will be as good as new on that part. And now a classic Indiana car commercial. No matter where you go in central Indiana, there's a Datsun dealer near you. Find the sporty 200SX in Lafayette, an economical Sentra in Shelbyville, a luxurious Maxima in Muncie, an affordable Pulsar in Bloomington, an awesome 300ZX in Indianapolis, the roomy Stanza in Columbus, or tough Nissan trucks in Terre Haute. Your central Indiana Datsun dealer is the man to see. See your central Indiana Datsun dealers.
is our outdoor sandblast set, set up if uh, we can't fit it in our cabinet that we have built in there, which we can fit these in there, but you are kind of limited in how far you can reach around the sides. But besides that, cleaning up all the extra stuff that was going on in here. And then let me show you what happened on the other side. That bit that was all heavy surface rust and pitting. There it is right there. Just some very minute traces of it here, here. And anywhere you see that kind of matte look, that's where we touched up. Probably old scratches that got in the below the paint. Rusted area like that. Cleaned up the rest of this. So that's kind of the name of the game on all this. We're just gonna go through each of the panels, clean them up like this, just inspect them real well and find all the little issues. Clean it up. We'll wipe it down really, really good after we blow all the sand out of it. And then it'll be epoxy primer time for all these four panels that we're working on. All right, so we're into another day on this project. And after we did our spot blasting final blast type deal yesterday afternoon it cleared up some areas where i wanted to go ahead and coat all this out so this was on the first fender that we did from the last video and i'd coated all this the other fender i got a lane over there out in the lean to right now we did the same thing just coated all the little side areas uh, i'm not putting it on any of the outside the external area skins of the car basically just all the little hidden areas now what i want to do here since we did do some of our last blast i want to even this out plus i want to get what's left of this red oxide primer off so we're going from 80 down to 180 and we're just going to kind of smooth this out we're going to do this on both doors and when those fenders the por 15 has dried on those we will flip them over and do the skins of those as well then we will be ready for our epoxy primer but first before that we will use our por 15 high build primer on the areas where the por 15 is so all this shiny gray stuff here is because it is a very non-porous shiny surface like that that's where this comes in this is your tie coat this brings this and you can help tie in regular primer. This has kind of a bluish look to it, so you, you will be able to tell if you covered your area sufficiently. We do that, then we'll go to our traditional epoxy primer, which is what this is. Well now, we are ready for some primer action, some sort of primer, maybe not the primer, but this is the POR15 coat we put on the inside of the fender, inside of the headlight bucket area. And since we've had this moving around some dust, we're going to uh, use some prep cleaner. And I found this at uh, O'Reilly's. We'll see if it's any good. Multi-purpose foaming prep cleaner. It's a Dupli-Color product. No, I'm not getting sponsored for it. But it might be useful to you if it ends up being useful to me. So we're just going to spray it. I guess just loosely. Not too heavy in there. It gets into me crevices. Take a heavy duty shop towel and wipe this booger down. Then we're going to use, like I mentioned earlier, our POR15 high build primer, formerly called Tyco primer. It looks the same, that's why I'm saying that because it has a kind of a bluish tint to it and it has the same smell and the same quality. So I think it's the same, they just renamed it. Okay, so. Just gonna wipe this down, pull off any foreign such whatever. Of course, the original PR15 stuff is pretty hard and pretty slick, so it does clean up well. Wipes down quickly. We do uh, have, a, that's about 85 degrees, but the humidity is really low today, so that's a good thing. And uh, I do want it to hit the top rail. I have that coated as well, the top that you can see when you open the hood on along the sides.
and we're gonna have to let this dry. In the meantime, we can do the door skins and touch up any of the, the edge epoxy for the repair area. I still need to wipe this one down. But we'll do this one. This is the driver's door. I've already went through with the final sand on it. Cleaned up everything there. So really it's just epoxy time. We don't have to use the high build POR15 Tyco primer. I'm just gonna go straight epoxy. Same thing with the other door. So we're gonna knock this out, get the other one knocked out, and then we'll see what we have to think about then. Now one thing we want to do on these external panels, the skins, is when we go to wipe this down, we want to roll the rag over a few times, get clean side of the rag, and then get new rags or keep folding it until you have clean rags to where when you're wiping it and you look at it, you don't have any more residue. You're going to get a lot of the metal residue from sanding. It'll look kind of black or gray, but you want to wipe it over and over until you get a very very bare minimum if not completely clean rag that's going to keep you from having a floating layer of primer over top of the metal it's going to be floating off over a bunch of mucky dust okay so just make sure you're real clean and then try to get all your corners and edges all the way around and like i said if you get something a little bit of dust in there not a big deal. It's going to be very isolated compared to having an entire film underneath there. Now is a great time to like and subscribe to the Hoosier Garage. of the color looks pretty good did the inside of both the fenders inside of both the doors I'm starting to do that but uh, I ran out immediately the paint goes pretty quick it's pretty loose but that's okay we got some more on order we'll have that probably this weekend we'll get into the rest of that um, this is fast drying which is cool several hours later and uh, I had some of these I had made and they are based exactly off of the factory ones. These are just little seals that keeps debris from going up inside of this area here. And uh, these are pretty thin. They're less than an eighth of an inch, I would say. And they get kind of brittle, crispy, and they don't really seal as well. But I just simply took a pattern off of them. We're done with those. And the pattern went on to some of this rubber, almost equivalent type stock. A little bit thicker as you can see nearly a quarter inch thick but what this is is uh, the mat that you can buy like exercise mat activity you know, multi-purpose mat similar to this type of stuff here on the floor you can buy it in rolls like the farm store or Home Depot or Lowe's and uh, I've had a lot of for like my van the back uh, floor for you throwing tools and stuff down it's really nice kind of squishy but still very firm and durable so I just cut that from there, and I used the original clips, cleaned them up, and there you have it. So one for each side, they just mirror each other, and you'll be good to go there.
course after spraying. Here it sits. I'll show you the parts here in a second, but um, I like it pretty well. I like it. And like I said, I kind of left this, I know it looks a little chintzy, but I just kind of dusted into there, got up in there and even did a little bit of this because I realized, ah, we can do that. Completed that in there. And what I have left over, I shot on the frame rails. We also did back side of the torsion bar, cross member, down the inside of the rockers on both sides. There's your engine bay view, typical. There. sure to get underneath everything that I could I'm sure it's not perfect but you know we're gonna drive it here's your hood latch support this is your grill header panel it goes kind of across the front of the radiator support nice shine on it and let me think, I think I started out the video saying something about, well, maybe we can hang the doors or whatever. That was kind of getting ahead of myself because if you hang the doors to get it down off of all this, it's gonna make it a little heavier or bulky or something's gonna happen. So we're gonna keep the weight that it's at right here. And uh, other than just adding a couple grams of weight for uh, paint, we'll uh, just, uh, Leave the doors and the fenders off right now. Now we can still detail stuff out. Um, you know, like for instance, putting the little rubber doodads on here, the little bumpers from a new bumper kit. And on the fenders, which I have sitting outside the building right now, we can restore the headlight buckets and get some of that hardware. You know, like these guys right here. Clean those up real good. We got new ones of these, the little hood bumpers and stuff like that. And it helped to have the firewall on the inside done because we could put stuff like, we have the seals, we have the firewall insulation. It could go on there. Um, a lot of the other little knicky knack stuff, like, uh, well, what was I thinking? Oh, well, I guess it ain't so much knick knack, but we got a restored brake pedal assembly so the bracket that fits up in underneath the steering column mount and so I mentioned this on one of the lives that we had just done last night which by the time this shows I don't know maybe it's a few days or a week ago but it's good to get some of those parts that you have kicking around like this appear back on the car so stuff like that it can go on there uh, if you, especially if you've got your heater box ready and go on there but these have the little Little pins to hold them in and anything like that we can just put little little dinky items in as long as they don't get too heavy um, but hopefully we can get the car itself down onto some suspension we really it, it comes down to us needing to get some springs so we're gonna get some uh, Espo springs and things springs a little bit of lift on it, get the little stink bug stance going on, day two look. And then we need to finish the rest of our uh, buying of like brand new joints and stuff to put on the front end. I got a few of them, but really we need to get, you know, the control arm bushings all in and get some of the other ones ordered and blah, blah, blah. Then we can set this thing down. And uh, so that's the plan and that might be a little bit, you know, we're in trying times right now. And, uh, oh, I did paint this back here. It's a little hard to see, but we got green under the bumper pocket area. A little bit under there. We'll show you all that later. But uh, it's been kind of a long day of just doing some detail stuff and then rolling it back in over here. So, well, goodness, what's next? I think what's next is we're gonna be getting into some, uh, we're starting to step up and ramp into the body work now the body work that I hate doing is all the Bondo block sanding stuff like this. Now I don't necessarily need to 
do this just yet, but I do need to work on, like I mentioned, some of these areas and get some of our either sealer or our, we can do fiberglass in some of these lower areas. And we do need to do a little bit of work on this quarter panel where we had to split it many, many episodes ago. Need to check some of that and make sure we're good because so you can see it here where we got thin right there from trying to grind it. So I'll probably have to kind of redo an area there. Once that's done, then we can mac that out with some green. We do have some door hinge pins and we'll have to rebuild the hinges. These are the hinges we're going to use and some of the stuff needs a little bit of work but we have a new set of pins for both sides and then we got the upper parts for the doors so that is going to be what's coming up on the hoosier garage so hope you like it hope it inspires or motivates you i'm just glad to get some color back on there again after a year and a half we did some on the floors now we got some on the the areas that you're really going to start seeing like the engine bay so it's we're getting closer so thanks for watching make sure you check out the t-shirt store below in the description